be aware of your be aware of simply being before being anything in particular the awareness of simply being is expressed in the mind as the knowledge I am before what I am has been qualified by experience Ask yourself the question What is it that is aware of my being? What is it in us? that knows that I am in other words is our own being known by itself or is or is our own being known by something other than itself when we say I know that I am is the I that I am the same I that knows that I am or are there two eyes in us one that is and one that knows that I am see in this way in the directness and simplicity of your experience that your own being is known by itself when we say simply 
I am. What we really mean is, I know that I am. And the I that I am is the same I that knows that I am. In other words, my being is self-aware. It is aware of itself. It is not known by something other than itself. In other words, our being is really aware being or knowing being. So knowing or being aware is not an attribute of our self. It is the nature of our self. Just as shining is not an attribute of the sun, it is the very nature of the sun. Just as the sun is self-luminous by nature, so our self Our own being is self-knowing or self-aware by nature. And just as the sun cannot cease to illuminate itself, so our self cannot cease to know itself. Our self is the knowing of itself. Knowing itself is what it is, not what it does. So our self's primary knowledge is its knowledge of itself. In other words, our self knows itself before it knows any other thing. Just as the sun illuminates itself before it illuminates any other planet.
And just as the sun doesn't cease illuminating itself when it illuminates other planets, so our self doesn't cease knowing itself when it knows other things such as thoughts, images, feelings, etc. However, when our self knows other things such as thoughts, images, feelings, sensations, perceptions, etc. Its knowledge of itself becomes mixed with its knowledge of other things and seems as a result to become qualified or limited by them. I'll give you another analogy in case this is not clear. When the actor John Smith, or before the actor John Smith, plays the part of King Lear, he knows himself as John Smith. when he starts playing the role of King Lear, he assumes King Lear's thoughts and feelings. And his knowledge of himself is mixed with his knowledge of King Lear's thoughts and feelings. And this mixture of John Smith's knowledge of himself and King Lear's thoughts and feelings creates the imaginary person, King Lear. There is no real person called King Lear present person, the apparent person of King Lear, is the person of John Smith mixed with and therefore seemingly limited by King Lear's thoughts and feelings. So when King Lear has the feeling, I am King Lear, who is really having that feeling? Whose knowledge of himself is King Lear's knowledge of King Lear? The only one present in King Lear is John Smith. So King Lear's knowledge of himself is John Smith's knowledge of himself mixed with and seemingly limited by King Lear's thoughts and feelings. So in any experience that King Lear has, 
John Smith's knowledge of himself is not absent. It is just mixed with King Lear's thoughts and feelings. Likewise, our knowledge of ourself shines equally brightly in all experience. However wonderful or awful or neutral experience may be. But in all experience, our knowledge of ourself is mixed with our knowledge of other things. And this mixture of our knowledge of ourself with our knowledge of thoughts, images, feelings, memories, activities, relationships creates the imaginary person we seem to be. And just as King Lear's knowledge of himself as King Lear is really John Smith's knowledge of himself mixed with King Lear's thoughts and feelings. So the feeling, I am a person, I am a man, I am a woman, I am 24 or 46 or 62 years old. All these all this apparent knowledge of ourself as a person, a man, a woman of a particular age. All this knowledge is our being's knowledge of itself mixed with thoughts, feelings, images and memories. In other words, our knowledge of ourself is never really obscured, let alone missing. Our knowledge of ourself, impersonal, unlimited being, is always shining brightly in experience. But in most cases it is mixed with and therefore seemingly limited by thoughts, images, feelings, etc. What is traditionally known as enlightenment or awakening or self-realization or illumination is not an extraordinary experience that a person has. It is not an experience at all. It is simply the recognition of the nature of our self before it is qualified and as a result seemingly limited by experience. A person cannot become or be enlightened because the person is the mixture of thoughts and feelings that seem to condition and therefore limit our being. What is called enlightenment or awakening is simply our being's knowledge of itself before it is qualified and therefore seemingly limited 
by experience. So the term enlightenment is a complete misnomer. It evolved out of the popular belief and misunderstanding that a person acquires a new and marvelous experience. The, the light of our self is always shining brightly. It is like the sun. It cannot shine with greater or less intensity than it always does. Our self, our being is like that. Our being is always in the same condition. It cannot become enlightened. It is already the light of the self, the light of pure knowing. If anything, we could say that it is that our essential being is endarkened by experience. Just as King Lear could be said to be an endarkening of John Smith. But even that is not quite true because nothing really happens to John Smith when he assumes King Lear's thoughts and feelings. However, it is true to say that King Lear's knowledge of himself, sorry, John Smith's knowledge of himself becomes mixed with his knowledge of King Lear's thoughts and feelings. And therefore, he seems to cease knowing himself as he is. Likewise, our being's knowledge of itself, the simple knowledge that shines in each of us, as the knowledge I am, or the feeling of being, seems to be obscured or dimmed when our being's knowledge of itself becomes mixed with its knowledge of other things. All that is necessary is for our being to see itself clearly. To know itself clearly. This clear knowledge of ourself is not a new experience that happens to us. It is simply the revelation of what we always and already are. Revelare, revelation from the Latin revelare, meaning to lay bare. What is traditionally called enlightenment or awakening is simply the laying bare of our own being as it essentially is, not as it might become, but as it is now.
the content of our experience is irrelevant. We might be deeply depressed, we might be ecstatically happy, or we may be simply walking down the street or eating lunch. In each case, our being shines equally brightly. I am depressed. I am ecstatic. I am eating lunch. The same I am. The same self-aware being. Qualified by various feelings, states, activities or relationships. All that is necessary is to recognize the nature of our being before it is qualified by experience. Just as John Smith clothes himself in King Lear's thoughts and feelings and seems as a result to become King Lear, so our essential self-aware being clothes itself in thoughts, feelings, sensations and perceptions and seems as a result to become a person. Just as our naked body remains our naked body, irrespective of the clothes we wear, so our naked being remains our naked being, irrespective of the content of experience. Before our naked, self-aware being becomes mixed with the qualities of experience, it is all alone by itself. 
and being all alone by itself. There is nothing in itself other than itself with which it could be qualified and therefore limited. In other words, our naked self-aware being has no limits of its own. It only seems to acquire limits when it becomes mixed with experience. In other words, our naked self-aware being has no personal qualities to it. It acquires personal qualities from experience, from thoughts, images, feelings, memories, etc. But of its own, in itself, it has no personal qualities or limitations. It is, as such, impersonal and unlimited. It is intimate, but impersonal. Transpersonal. And being without limits, there cannot be more than one impersonal, self-aware being. Because if there were even two such beings, each of these two beings would have to have a limit that distinguished them one from another. There are not two such unlimited impersonal beings, let alone seven billion. There is just a single intimate, impersonal, infinite being. And this single, intimate, impersonal, intimate being shines in each of our minds as the knowledge I am. Before what I am is qualified by experience. the religious name for this single, intimate, impersonal, infinite, self-aware being 
is God. But having overlooked the nature of their own being, most religious leaders over the years, over the centuries, have imagined that being infinite and impersonal, God is something other than ourself, at an infinite distance from ourself. The only reason people believe this is because they do not have the knowledge of themselves. If they had the proper knowledge of themselves, they would know that what is referred to as God is the very essence of their own being. Impersonal, infinite, but intimate. The knowledge I am is God's presence shining in our hearts. The knowledge I am is God's knowledge of himself shining in the midst of the person we seem to be. Thank you.